I, on the woodpecker today, I'm making this jig to make joints like this. When I built my water cabinet, I jointed my drawer's sides. To make those puzzle-shaped joints, I had to make a jig. When two boards were cut, I was able to glue them together. I end up with longer boards with a nice-looking joint. I know, there are a lot of ways to join two boards together to make a longer one. A simple butt joint, tongue and groove, biscuits or dominoes. But all those joints have one drawback. They need clamps to hold them together while the glue dries. With this kind of joint, clamps are not needed. But to cut this shape, I need a jig. I begin by drawing the jig in SketchUp. The first thing I do is put several guidelines one inch apart. Then I draw two circles. The size is not critical, they just need to be bigger than the bit I'll be using. Next I add segments to bold circles. 24 is far from being enough. Then I connect both circles with a line directly on their tops. To be able to identify both circles, I remove the interior of the right one. Then I copy everything. To do so, I select all, press the M key, then hold the control key and move them all to the right. Next I flip everything on the green axis and move all towards the other circles. In this example, I align the side of the circle with the center of the other circle. But it's not necessary, it can be less. Next, I move my selection so both circles touch each other. Then I measure the distance between the center of the left circle and the right of the last circle. Now that I have this distance, I can move a copy of everything to this exact distance. To do so, I simply use the numeral keypad and enter the exact measurement. After checking that it's ok, I put some guidelines on the center of both top lines. Then I trace two small lines just to cut those lines in their center. Then I can erase everything that I don't need for the final shape. When the bulk is done, I use the eraser tool and start erasing every little segment that I don't need. When I'm done, I have the actual shape that I want. I just need to select it, copy it at its end, and with the numeric keypad, Type times 10. And I have 10 copies of my shape ends to ends. But this shape is made out of thousands of tiny segments. It's way too much. So I select all and weld everything together. Now it's just one continuous line. This will be much easier to work with. After erasing the guidelines, I place a brand new one to the height of the jig, make a copy of the pattern and snap it to that guideline. Next, just like I did a while ago, I add a small line in the center of the first bottom horizontal line so I can cut it in two. Next, I can add the left part of the jig which will hold the hold downs. I also make another guideline to the approximate length of the jig. Then, close to that line, I connect both horizontal straight lines together and erase to their right. Next, I select all, rotate everything to 90 degrees and move it to the origin. Now it's the ideal time to save my work. As you can see, this wasn't my first try. Next, using the export to SVG plugin, I export the pattern. When it's saved, I switch program open the web page makercam.com and open my newly saved jig pattern. 
after moving it to the origin, I make a rectangle with the dimensions of a quarter inch by a little less than five inches and move it so it will act as the key for the jigs fence. Then I'm ready to generate the G code that I'll send to the X-carve. I begin by saying that the key will be approximately 1 16th of an inch with the same depth pass. Next, I select the external edge of the pattern, choose the profile operation, enter the thickness of the jig, the depth of each passes, and ask the program to calculate the path. When it's done, I can save the G code. I select both paths that I just created and export them. But it's not done yet. I need to edit the G code. I open the file and just before the M3 command that start the spindle, I add S18000. This will give the speed of 18,000 RPM to the spindle. Okay, my router doesn't have an automatic speed control but adding 18,000 RPM will give enough power to the relay to control the router. Then I copy the G-code to a USB key and bring it to the laptop which controls the X-carve. When the jig is cut, I still need to take care of the jig's fence. I begin by routing a key into a scrap piece of plywood. Then I cut the actual key. Next, it's just a question of assembling everything. After cutting the excess plywood, I can move the old down from the old jig to the new. I also need to add something so I can keep the piece to cut tight to the fence. To do that, I screw a wedge cut at 5 degrees onto the jig. And with that, the jig is done. I can try it. Job done. It's not that bad. I would like to also try thicker pieces of wood. But since those are old drawers fronts, I need to cut the dovetails first. Then I can cut the interlocking shape. The bit uh, is not tall enough. I need to finish the job with a rasp. Here they are, both pieces together. Not bad. Not bad at all. Those are the two tests I've made with the jig that I've cut with the X-carve. But I also want to try to cut the shape without a CNC. So I print a full-size pattern of the jig on three pieces of paper and stick them together. Then I cut a piece of plywood to the same width as the jig. Next, I stick the pattern onto the plywood and with the scroll saw, I cut the puzzle's shape. Okay, I'm not as accurate as a CNC. So, I have to file my pattern a little. Then, just like for the other one, I need to screw a fence. A hole down. And a wedge. Now I can try it.
it's working, but it's not as easy to put them together. Maybe you're better at scroll sawing than I am. I would never use that technique to join the tabletop, but for drawer signs, I find this does a nice job. I hope you liked my new jig and see you soon for the next episode of The Woodpecker.